All right, guys, we got another experiment today. So this little mini cooler fridge was given to me about uh, two, three weeks ago. I was on a job site and I seen a maintenance guy setting this over by the dumpster, asked him if I could have it. He said, sure, it works. They just had no more use for it. So I don't really need it either. And it's kind of old and stinky on the inside. So I figured I'd bring it back to the shop here and do a little bit of experiment into it. So, I have a list of experiments that I want to do, and one of those experiments is to take a self-contained cooler, preferably uh, a cooler with a uh, air-cooled condenser and a, uh, uh, a forced air evaporator. And what I want to do is just switch out the refrigerant with some just random refrigerants and just sort of see what happens. Now, I'm not going to do that with this particular unit uh, because, like I said, I want to find a unit that has a, a, a forced air evaporator and a, a air-cooled condensing unit. Um, this unit obviously just has a static condenser and a static evaporator. And because, only because, the majority of stuff that I and I would assume a few of you guys out there watching work on is um, like self-contained coolers that have forced air uh, condensing cooler uh, condensing coils and a forced air evaporator coil. So. I wanted to, uh, any experiment that I do, I want to make it relatable to stuff we see in the field. So since this ne isn't necessarily relatable to stuff I see in the field every day, I'm going to do a different experiment. A uh, experiment that is probably going to destroy this compressor, this unit itself. Now, you'll notice here, I have my suction line removed. I've already recovered the charge, and there's my discharge line. In case you're wondering, the charge was 2.4 ounces. So it didn't take very long to recover the charge, if you know what I mean. Anyway, what I'm going to do first, just to make sure that it's working, and just to show you that this compressor, this vapor pump, actually pumps air, I'm going to put some water over on this side and just let it pump air through the water, just for a few minutes. And I'm going to take an amp draw of our compressor and see what it's doing. And then... For the finale of this experiment, I'm going to take that bowl of water and I'm going to sit it over here. I'm going to let the compressor suck that water inside of it and blow itself apart so I can see what happens. I assume what's going to happen is it's probably just going to go off on lock rotor amps as soon as it starts compressing the water. I can't imagine that it's going to move a whole heck of a lot of water through it, but I'm real curious to see what it does. So... Without further ado, guys, let me go get my amp clamp, and we'll get started here. All right. As you can tell, here's my hot gas discharge line sitting in my cool lit bowl of water. Let's plug it in and see what goes on here. See, we're pumping air through there. Pulling 0.5 amps. All right, we are unplugged. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this bowl over to the suction side and I'm going to let the compressor suck water into it and yeah, see what happens. All right. Let me switch this around and I'll bring you guys back in just a second. Okay, here's our grand finale. On the left, you'll see I have my suction line sitting in a bowl of water. And over here, I just have a, a bowl to catch any sort of water that spits out of there. Now, what I think will happen, like I said earlier, is as soon as I plug this in, it'll start pulling in some of that water and it'll probably seize up and go off on uh, internal overload. Which, if it does, I might just bypass that so we can just see what happens to a compressor when it gets liquid pulling back into the pistons. So, and, and this isn't an exact representation of what would happen if you were to get liquid slugging into a compressor, but uh, given the circumstances, it's probably pretty close. So, here we go. Let's plug her in. Oh. 
Well, it looks like it's pumping out a little bit of water and a bunch of oil. Okay, we might need to grab some more water here. Well, now that we got a majority of our oil out of our compressor, it's not going to run very long now. I wasn't really expecting that. Let me grab some water here so we can refill that bowl. All right. Now that we got a what looks to be a majority of the oil washed out of this compressor, I refilled the bowl. Let's continue to see what happens. See, what I think is going on here is that compressor obviously is sucking water up and it's filling up the shell of the compressor and that water is forcing the oil out. If you notice our amp, our amps jumped up to 5.2. They were at about 0.9 when we first started. I got oil back feeding into my bowl and it looks like we just cut off on our thermal overload. Interesting. So it looks like we stopped pumping. Let's give it a minute here. Let that thermal reset itself and uh, it'll kick back on. If it keeps going off on thermal, like I said, I'm just going to bypass it for experimenting reasons. Right, kick back on, pulled 5.2 amps, pumped for a second. Went off on thermal again. All right, I'm going to bypass that thermal. It's not as fun if we have a safety device preventing us from tearing this compressor apart. As you can tell, we got that pesky safety switch out of the way. That thermal overload, current relay, whatever you want to call it. That's out of the way. So let's plug this back in and see what happens now. Uh, our amp draw went from uh, three to eight to four to five. It's not pumping as much water. It is sucking up some water though. Although it's sort of slowing down now. Pulling five amps still, nothing happening. I'm sort of surprised there's not any rattling going on. Still pulling five amps. Nothing coming out of our discharge line anymore. It appears that some of the water is going back in through our suction line, so we're not pumping at all, but we're still drawing high amps. So I wonder if our cylinders have seized up. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm sort of disappointed that there's not a whole lot of rattling and shaking and everything else going on. But if I had to guess, our, our pistons are probably locked up right now. And since we're only drawing 5 amps, that's not enough amperage to uh, trip my 20 amp breaker we're plugged into. I'm going to give it another few seconds, and I think I'm going to unplug it before it catches on fire. Not hot to the touch.
Huh. Smack it with a hammer, it comes back to life. There we go. Got to water our compressor here. Must have locked up again. Eh, got a little bit of action out of it. Hmm. I don't know if it's spitting anything out because I'm hitting it with a hammer or if me hitting it with a hammer is just temporarily freeing up our pistons. Looks like some of the water is going back into our suction side bowl here. Hmm. Nope. Might be dead. Still pulling uh, 4.8 amps. There we go. I freed her up for a little bit. Hmm, nope. She might be dead. Well, guys, I think I'm going to call it. I think she's dead. Now the next step is to uh, yank that compressor out of there and cut it in half. See what the insides look like. I'm kind of hoping there's some uh, pretty impressive damage to the pistons, the valves, or the reeds. Something in there that uh, definitely shows signs of water being pumped through it. So, let's see. Well... Looks like our problem is we got moisture in the system, huh? Look at all that water down inside there. I'm surprised this thing didn't just short the ground and electrocute me with my little experiment here. Now, as a reminder, guys, anytime you guys are doing some off the wall experiments like this, be safe, okay? As safe as possible. Don't do what I do. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this compressor motor out of here. And we're going to check out our pistons. See if I can get to them. And uh, see what those look like. All right. Let's see if I can do this one-handed here. So I got my valve head, or what I call the valve head, pulled off here. And this is our little reed a reed plate right here. Of course, it's all wet. Doesn't seem to be cracked or damaged or anything like that. And right here, this is our piston, of course. If I can get it to rotate here. As you can tell, that's our piston moving up and down. So there isn't as much damage as I was expecting, but I guess, you know, it's not like the unit was running with water in it for so long that uh, the oil and refrigerant had any sort of acid in it. So 
but I was, I guess not really hoping, but I was kind of looking forward to uh, maybe catastrophic piston failure. Like I was thinking maybe this piston arm right here would just snap right off or the shaft might just snap right off. Something crazy, you know, but no, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy at all on this one. Windings didn't short out, which is probably good, so I didn't get electrocuted, I guess. Just a little guy here. Hmm. I wonder what's under these domes. Interesting. I'm going to pull those off real quick. Let me set the camera down real quick, guys. All right. Pop those domes off. I don't really know what was in there. I mean, there was water in there, but I don't really know what these are for. But I was able to hook my drill up to the other side of this shaft. So. That's a pretty good idea of what it looks like when it's probably running full speed, maybe near full speed. There we go. Now we got a variable speed compressor right here. Full load, half load, almost no load. That's pretty cool. I might just save this compressor for uh, experimental purposes. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's experiment. Hope it was as fun for you as it was for me. I'm going to go ahead and clean my mess up here and get out of here for the night, all right? We'll see you on the next one, guys, all right? Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, and I will uh, talk to you guys sometime in the future. Take care, guys.